Hello, and welcome to the next section of the Valheim Beginner's Guide series. Today we're going to be looking at the Black Forest. Now, the Black Forest is noted as being possibly the start of the grindiest part of the game, and we'll look into why that is later. So, off screen, I did take some time to build my own large shelter here. I don't think it's necessary for me to show you how to do that because I already showed you a bit of that in the first game. And there are plenty of guides on YouTube which can give you the more finer intricacies of making a shelter. So as discussed before, getting rained on is a small debuff to your health regeneration and your stamina regeneration. So always be aware of that before you head out. So the aim of what we're doing right now is that we are going to head to the Black Forest to get Certling Cores. Certling Cores are a required resource in order to be able to start the smelting process of metal ores. And while we explore the Black Forest, we're going to look at the other resource, which is tin and copper. But for now, it's more important that we get Certling Cores. So for the tombs and caves, which are full skeletons, I always recommend bringing a blunt weapon. In this case, you're going to want a club, which does blunt damage, and skeletons are weak to blunt damage. So generally, once you know where you're going in terms of where a black forest is, it's always a good idea to mark where that general area is, or just check your map. As, you, as soon as you move your cursor over a sec, uh, section of the map, if you look in the top right corner of the map, you'll see it highlights into saying whether it's the meadows or the black forest. To find a tomb, you're looking for either a pile of stones or a mound. The things that denote where a tomb is, is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be black crows or skeletons. Skeletons always act as guards to tombs. As you're exploring the Black Forest, make sure you take note of where you find new resources. In this case, we have thistles. Thistles are going to become very important soon here, so make sure you mark them on your map. And to do that, you press M, use an icon, double click, and type thistles. Enter escape. Another new type of resource you may come across here are blueberries. Those are also very important to mark down if you do come across them. So trolls, I generally don't recommend you mess with them until you actually get better, decent armor and weapons. And here we have another new resource, which is carrot seeds, which you can plant. But in order to plant those, we're going to need a cultivator. And for that, you need bronze, which we don't have yet. But for now, just keep collecting them. Don't get too frantic if you're being chased by a troll. They don't have the best pathfinding either. In most cases. So here we have a tomb. Now be very careful, they're surrounded by skeletons which also have archers on them. So I'm just gonna play a little daisy do. So you can choose to fight them out here if you want. But you can also just go right into the tomb like this. You can either hit E to enter or just keep pushing your way in and you'll automatically go in. Burial chambers. Now this is a place where you can find certainly cores. It's not guaranteed. Keep that in mind. There is always a chance you may find nothing in here. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm actually going to put a fireplace. You can actually build fireplaces in here. And we already have a visitor. Now if you're wet or soaking you might want to get the debuff of the wetness off you. Because otherwise you're going to have a much slower time. 
Here we go. See if we can start fighting these guys. So always be mindful of your stamina as well as your uh, blocking. Remember to block more. You have to eat more uh, health-based foods, which is mostly meats. Whoa, got to be careful here. So usually, <clears throat> I really have to stop doing that. I'm sorry. I have this annoying habit of smacking my lips for some reason. One of the things you should be looking to do here is checking to make sure if there are any spawners in here. But if you want to reduce your chance of getting lost in these caves here, it's not a bad idea to start checking by one side of the room and tracing, uh, and I should I should say tracing your way from one side to another. So once it says we're resting, that means we are. Oh, see the roof is pretty low here, so we're going to start getting some smoke damage here if we're not careful. Now with a comfort of three, that gives you about eight minutes worth of rested. So I'm going to do a quick rest here. So by default, you're always going to have three doors available to you, left, right, and center. Sorry, it's 10 minutes worth, not eight minutes. So I'm going to pick one side to go through, and I'm going to trace my way through it here. So ready? Block at the last second to do a parry. See, we have a spawner in here. Now we should go and destroy that quickly. And be sure to collect any bones because that's used to upgrade. Now here we go. Already we found one Certling Core. And there we see we can now build a smelter and a charcoal kim. kiln. And here we start seeing some treasures. So always check the corners here. Because this treasure you can sell later. So when I talk about navigating the labyrinths, imagine that I'm putting my left hand on the wall and going around, sticking to the left, exploring everything in all the corners. Right, and as soon as you keep going to the door, keep holding to the left here and check the next section. Never a bad idea to have your shield up and checking corners as you go in. This is a dead end, so now we're gonna trace our way back all the way to the start here. And now we're gonna keep doing the same. Gonna keep our to our left here and go explore. Check any adjacent hallways to make sure that you're not gonna get ambushed. And here we have another spawner. Always break these up if you don't want to get swarmed. Oop. And always be on the always keep your uh, sound up so you can hear what's sneaking up behind you. So the minimum amount of certain cores we're going to want on startup is five. Whoa. Here we go. Be very careful with ghosts. They could be... If you're not careful, ghosts can do you in pretty quickly here. I was a little reckless, but I made it. Don't worry too much, most of the sound is just ambience.
The very minimum amount of Serling cores you want to get in one trip is about 10. 5 to make a smelter and 5 to make a charcoal kiln. Close that behind me just in case. Nope, nothing here. So always check your corners and if you have to wait, if you're really low in health, remember, you can get a rested bonus by sitting near a fireplace. Resting near a fire helps you regenerate even more health than just your rested bonus alone. I can hear there's a lot of enemies behind that door, so we're going to be very careful on our way in. You can use your doors to your advantage because they'll absorb hits for you. And block a lot of hits from these skeletons. If we can get more, uh... If we can get more certain cores, that's always better. That's no good. So I'm in a pretty lucky position here. Nope, never mind. See, as soon as he hisses, see? Block. As soon as you hear that hiss, you block. Oh. Switch to my club. All right, more certain cores. And remember at the beginning of the game, Huggins said that there are these uh, veg viziers, whatever you call them, which will mark the location. So the elders are next boss. So we're gonna go and hit E. There it is. We're gonna zoom out and look how far away it is. So our base is here. This is where the altar is. So due west, that's not too bad. Although I do believe there are technically other places in which the Elder can spawn. I can see on the other side of this door spooky skeleton looking at me. Okay. We're going to just stick to our left here. Make sure you have your shield up. Nothing. Possibly a spawner ahead. Watch out, that's a one star. If you didn't have a chance to update your, uh, or upgrade, I should say, your leather armor, now would be a good time to do it, if you've been spending any time grinding. Okay. We're going to stick to the left side here, and I think that's a spawner in there, so be very careful. Again, keep in mind, you may not always be lucky with the amount of certain cores you get spawned in. I've actually had some caves that did not give me anything at all. There's usually gold on the side of these altars, so always keep an eye out. So we're already at 12, which is good. More is better. Serling cores are also going to be the means in which you can fast travel. And I think that does it for this cave. No more rooms, no more adjacents. I might be wrong on this information, but I'm pretty sure skeletons do not respawn in the caves, but they do respawn outside of the caves. 
So if you ever need more bones, you can just leave the tombs for a few days and then come back and more skeletons should spawn near them. That's not too bad because we made off with 26 bones, which I believe we can be used to upgrade our club into the next tier, which is always useful. Let's go ahead and get our stuff. I'm not going to be too, too picky about it. And the smelter will go. That's not a smelter, that's a kiln. What do you got, Hugin? Deposit your raw ore into this furnace and it will melt away all the impurities, leaving you with just a bar of refined metal to work at the forge. You will need coal to fuel the smelter. This can be produced by building a kiln and loading it with wood. So here, if you look at it, he says it can take 0 out of 25. That means a 25 stack of wood. And the smelter works uh, this way, where one side you deposit coal, and the other side you deposit 10 ore. And out here is where the uh, refined ore will come out of. Usually to maximize the time I spent with this, I, uh, I'll go ahead and throw a stack of wood in to let that cook. It doesn't take very long. but this will be a good opportunity for us to go into the woods and start finding some copper. So what I did ahead of time here was I took the three pieces of antler horns and I made three pickaxes. This way, instead of only bringing one and having it break soon, you can have three whole axes to bring with you in order to start uh, mining material if you want to. So what we'll also do here is we're gonna make a little workbench for us here. And don't set yourself on fire like I just did. Try and find a... There we go. Shelter this. Nope. because we wanted to repair our gear so we don't have to keep running back to base. This is why, well, now I'm gonna have to run back and get another pickaxe here because as usual, I'm pretty scatterbrained and I forget these things. So always make sure you bring, uh, always bring extra pickaxes with you. And we're gonna start digging down as far as we can go. You're gonna see there's a point in which you can't dig yourself any further, but you can see that the copper node deposit does go pretty far down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we can get out. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna quickly go back to base, rest up, get the other pickaxes, and then come back here. So I'm just gonna fast forward this part Another thing to be very careful about here is that because you are building yourself into a little pit here, it's very easy to get cornered by mobs if they decide to spawn on top of you.
And there you go. One copper node. So that was about two in-game uh, days worth of work there. All that's left to do is to grab it and sort it. So pretty decent amount, about four stacks worth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of that just to get started with. We're going to run this back to the base, cook it down, and while we do that, letting it cook, we are going to go look for some tin. Put that in there. The ratio for coal to iron ore, it, or for metal ore in general, is always going to be two coal to one metal. Even small patches of black forest like this can also have uh, tin deposits, so we're going to go ahead and take these. And with some copper, now we can make a forge, which is the next type of upgrade bench. Or workbench, I should say. It's not upgrade. Technically is, though. Now with craft, as you can see, two copper and one tin to make one bronze bar. And you can see all the new recipes we unlocked. So that would conclude this uh, introduction to the Black Forest biomes where the whole point is where you have to start with certain cores in order to even process the copper and tin to start making bronze. Again, this is going to be considered one of the most arduous parts of the entire game, arguably. If you like this video, make sure to leave a comment. I always like uh, constructive criticism on how to make these videos better or more streamlined. And if you like, feel free to like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more content. And until next time... Have a good day.